I think you and Kurt are better at finding those than I am. Uh, I don't know about that. Just get lucky. I guess we don't have a ton to talk about tonight, do we? I don't know. I actually got quite a bit. I mean, not a ton, but I have a, a pretty decent amount. All right. I kind of took some notes on stuff. and I took a few too, but I just hope I'm ready for whatever you bring up. <clears throat> There's anything you're going to talk about the... About the... Uh, renovation the thing, but renovation. not but not much. Right, and I just have a little something to add to that, but mainly I just kind of looked at the lake situation. Yeah. And then there's it, some... It is kind of a situation, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> there's a number of th- like aspects of it that are mm-hmm. kind of tough to deal with. Yeah, there's. I think it's it's kind of... There's a few angles to look at. But, Again, I, but we can save that for the podcast. Yeah. <clears throat> I, um... I, uh... We were on the dock for so long last night, and I've like, Tani and I both have like motion sickness today. <laughs> it's so weird. We were on the dock for so long though, but like, like even today, like I'm sitting, and it feels like everything's just kind of like rolling, like the dock does. You know, <laughs> it's so because Tani mentioned it, and I was like, you know, I I was like, oh, you probably just have a hangover or whatever, and then I was like standing up like in the kitchen. And I started like kind of moving like that. And I was like, <laughs> oh man, I don't feel so good. <laughs> but I mean, we were on it for probably, I don't know, like eight or nine hours yesterday. <clears throat> <laughs> kind of weird. <laughs> Well, I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, hold on a second. I just wanted to make sure nothing happened right before we started recording. (laughs) Just scroll through Twitter real quick. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Like if we went this whole podcast and Garza had been traded or something. <laughs> right. right. I'll tell you what I, I uh, what what um sites do you use for looking at stats and stuff? Um, I use Baseball Reference and mostly Baseball Reference. Yeah, I use. Oh, go ahead. And then the like the Cubs dot com sometimes too. I use Baseball Reference a lot, but I started using Fangraphs. And um, and baseball cube. Baseball cube. Yeah, that one's kind of interesting. It's got it's, it has a I don't know. It's just um, I kind of like fan graphs because like I'm gonna talk to tonight about um, like patience at the plate and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's just a very like sabermetric website. Yeah. But it's kind of cool because you can hover over it and then it will take you to like kind of an explanation of what that stat means and stuff like that so I don't know I like it quite a bit and tells you like what the league average is and you know where the numbers should be and hmm. it's pretty interesting but baseball cube what is the um, URL I think it's just uh oh did I lose Maybe you not. can you hear me you can just cut out for a second you're back now It's uh, thebaseballcube.com. And then you can, like, search, um, like, like, and then it'll, like... Um, all these all these sites have a very, like, utilitarian 
I know. To them. <laughs> <You> know. <laughs> it's like we're not really gonna give you anything like nice to look at because this is all about the stats, man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is I don't funny. know. It's just kind of interesting to see some of the more like advanced stats and they don't do a very good job though of explaining of telling you what those stats are. Uh, like, yeah. um, I mean, some of them you can figure out, but like some of them are like, what's XBH percentage, you know? And you yeah. can't hover over it. Oh, I guess there's a stats glossary. Glossary on yeah. that. That'll but I can't be. I ain't, ain't got time for that. <laughs> ain't nobody got time for I that. Know. I want to hover. Like he... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just I've started kind of looking at those two sites a little bit more. Just you know. Kind of get used to looking at that type of stuff. Right. Well, I mean, I think I'm gonna talk more some about Castro tonight too, and it's stuff that I kind of got off there that it's just things you can't look up on you know, a normal just Cubs.com or even baseball reference. It just doesn't talk about those things, like what types of pitches they're seeing and stuff like that. All right. So. All right, I think I'm ready if you are. Yeah, let's do it. I'm not real sure about the status of my battery on this recorder, so we may, hopefully we can make it through the full episode without having to switch batteries. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Hello, and thanks for downloading this week's episode of the IVMB Podcast. It is July 21st, 2013. I'm one of your co-hosts, and I'm joined by one... My name is Corey, and I'm joined by one other IVMB guy. Hey, it's Andy. Kurt is not with us tonight, so I guess, Andy, that means you and I will be holding down the fort. Are you comfortable with that? Um, I'm pretty good at holding down things, because I'm getting a little <laughs> bit heavier these days. <laughs> So we you know what? It's been too hot. It's been too hot to exercise. Yeah, I'll, I'll use that as an excuse. You don't think I? Man, that that that's what the case is for me. It is it's too humid to be outside. <laughs> and my only like indoor uh, mode of exercise is uh, like a exercise bike from the seventies. <laughs> the seat really hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it doesn't have a seat anymore. It's just a pipe that goes up your ass when you're. <laughs> Right. I'm more of a walker. Like I, I really like to walk. Yeah. And it's just too hot. But I'm gonna hope. You know, tomorrow's Monday, so I'm gonna get back on the saddle. And, All right. Yeah. Go for or it. Back I... on the horse. I guess it's a horse. Well, the saddle's on the horse. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's just a saddle on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be more comfortable a... than this bike. <laughs> I've been playing a little hockey lately, so that's been pretty fun. Oh yeah, you've you've been playing with the uh, the brothers Smith. Yes, yeah. So I've been getting used to that, and 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 when and for the listeners, when I say hockey, I'm not talking about like rollerblades or ice skates or anything. Just <laughs> running around with the stick. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to do that. Like, um, I need to g tell me. Well, I guess they have their uh, their schedule online, but I want to get up there and do that here yeah, in the next couple fun, weeks. Man. So, anyways, uh, enough of the uh, Corey and Andy exercise hour. Um, <laughs> we'll re we record these episodes on Sunday evenings at 8.30 p.m. Central, and you can watch and listen live by going to ivmb.com slash live, and there's also a chat to log into, and we will do our best to um, keep an eye on it and 
chime in from time to time with your comments. Kurt usually does that. Um, and uh, so I'm going to try to do it tonight. Carrie says no ragbri for you guys. I'm not. You ever done ragbri, Andy? No, um, I'd like to at some point. Uh, my li- my um, dad is a huge cyclist. He's way into it. He's done ragbri and then riding across a few other states too. And he's uh, t- taken his bike from Oregon back to Illinois before. So he's pretty nuts about it. And uh, um, I'd like to at least try a longer bike ride at some point. I'm going to try like a 30 miler on Tuesday. We'll see how that goes. Oh man, that sounds like fun. Yeah, I w- I would really like to get into bike riding. I should try that. There's some yeah. good roads out here for it. Yeah, and it's a it's a good sport for people who can't really do high impact stuff as much anymore. Like right. I feel like I'm starting to feel like I need to give up running almost. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. Um, and then um at the end of the show we will pick a winner for this week's uh, photo caption contest, and the winner will receive. I pick it up for the live viewers. A copy of the MLB <laughs> Bloopers Deluxe Double Header DVD. Does it have a baseball shattering glass on the front? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have one of these to give away to next week's winner, too. Started watching it today Yeah. Uh, with my daughter. And um, it's pretty good. There's some funny stuff. Fernando Perez makes an appearance. Um, not in a blooper, but he, he's talking. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, I'm trying to think. There was, um, I don't remember. There was a couple of other. I'm only about halfway through. It's like 125 minutes. Wow. So it's it's pretty long. So I'm just kind of working my way through, it, way through it. And it's got like old bloopers and new bloopers. But it's not like, I don't know, it kind of like, uh, there's more stories, I guess. Like I, I used to watch the football follies back in the day, you know. Where it's right. just like a bunch of like oh fumbling and just players. rapid fire music with like right certain yeah it's music not, playing behind it yeah it's not so much of that stuff it's kind of more like profiles on like kind of the goofier players over the years and stuff like that so it's pretty good that sounds interesting yeah we'll have to show it on the next bus trip that we do I bet there's not a single baseball breaking glass in the actual bloopers <laughs> themselves I don't know I'm not that I've seen yet but. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for it. I guess that's the classic childhood blooper, though, right? With a baseball. Right. Yeah. So maybe that's what they're going for. That's probably it. Just trying to look cutting edge, maybe too. <laughs> uh, well, the tagline for our podcast is "Strong Opinions and Marginal Analysis of the Chicago Cubs." And boy, did I give you some marginal analysis last week. <laughs> <laughs> One of our listeners' uh, questions uh, was about who the Cubs will call up from the minor league system in the second half of the season. And we identified Junior Lake as the prospect with Iowa to be most excited about, but I predicted that the Cubs maybe wouldn't call him up this year to avoid the shortstop Castro versus Lake can of worms. And then I thought that if they did call him up, it'd be in September and he'd kind of play a limited role. And play third base maybe. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I also kind of assumed that the front office would stick to their strategy of having prospects get a full year in at AAA. And I said, I kind of like talk like, you know, well, clearly he's going to start at AAA next year. So why would they do, you know? Uh, Obviously, I was wrong. And the Cubs immediately. I think I at least least said September call up. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Uh, I I really thought I was like, you know, I, I thought I was dead on. Like, obviously not. So. Yeah, they called, promptly called up Junior Lake from Iowa, and he started every game since I made the prediction. It would be hilarious if they were listeners of the podcast, and they're like, oh, yeah, we'll show them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he gets on the phone right away to Iowa. Right. Uh, so Lake was kind of the original, um, I guess, challenger to Castro at shortstop player before Javier Baez entered the picture, and uh, he was signed as an undrafted free agent um, in 2008, and he's progressed at a, at a steady pace, basically moving up a step every year. He's 23 years old, and I, have, I, I think as we've seen so far, just in these three games, a, a pretty natural athlete. Andy, do you have any kind of initial thoughts on Lake from what you've seen so far in these three games? 
Yeah, I mean, they, the commentators have mentioned that over and over again, and uh, Swaim even commented on that. As he said something along the lines of, this is the first guy that seems like a major league player that has been called up that I've seen since I've been here. What do you think Anthony Rizzo had to say about that? <laughs> well, oops, I forgot about him. Um <laughs> Well, he's yeah. just been, he's been the manager for so long, you know. He just he forgets. <laughs> but yeah, they talked about that. That he's it just seems like an athlete, like you said, um, like he's ready to compete at this level. Um, he has the talent necessary, and the talent just needs to be refined a little bit. That seems to be what everybody's saying. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way that he's played so far seems to, to back that up. Now the refinement aspect. It's like something like you you mentioned playing a full season in AAA, and I, I feel like a full season in AAA continues that refinement and would be good. But do you um, think that because this Cubs team is kind of a AAA level team, they just figured it's kind of the same thing and brought them yeah, up? Yeah, maybe. Which uh, that that brings us maybe to the fact that he's playing center field, <laughs> which is insane. <laughs> I think that's absolutely bonkers. I mean. If he would have, he's uh, he's had a, what two errors so far um, in center field, and if he would have come out and made, I mean, played without you know just hitting the cutoff man and not making any errors, you know, maybe I would feel a little bit differently. But I think a lot of people have already said this, but you know, is the with the major league base, the major league club is at the time to learn a position, mm -hmm. you know. Right, right. I think that's I think that's pretty crazy, personally. Yeah, I mean, so I guess let's look at his defense first. Um, you know, Lake has mainly played shortstop and third base. He did play second base quite a bit when he was with um, Peoria in 2009, but he's starting center field now and kind of stepping in with Bogusevic getting injured. And uh, I, I think he's really only played a handful of games in the outfield in his minor league career, and I'm I kind of don't think any of them were in center field. Yeah. Um, Good Lord. I don't know. I guess the Cubs are just willing to toss him out there until De or DeRosa. I'm going to bring up DeRosa in a second. Until, um, oh, man, DeJesus uh, comes back. Yeah. But I kind of see him playing a, a DeRosa-type role where they he just he, he's kind of a natural athlete, and so they put him, they just plug him in wherever they need him because, I mean, he could play... He even played two games at first base, um, like very early on, like I think Arizona Fall League years ago or something, you know, like three or four years ago. But I mean, he, he's really, if he's a natural athlete, maybe he can, they just see him as one of those guys that for right now, they can use him wherever they need him and just kind of plug in holes and I don't know. Yeah. So like his athleticism will get him through, you know, the novelty of a, you know, a position he hasn't played or whatever, but I, that's not the case in, in center field. I mean, it's a lot of people probably think, oh yeah, any idiot can get out there and catch a fly ball. But man, it is like I don't know I if you saw is. that play where he ran into the wall, <laughs> like yeah. chasing a an eventual homer. Right. Like, what if he would have gotten injured there? You know. Yeah, he's like, oh yeah, there's a there's a thing called the warning track. I didn't know that. You know. <laughs> we um, don't have that in the infield. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then. He airmailed a throw to the plate today, uh, threw it into the dugout, actually. <laughs> yeah, and, and really that cost them the game. That cost I them mean, the game. And so, not, that you wanna, not that you want to pin it on a rookie, but, uh, I mean, it, yeah, it allowed the, 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 the eventual winning runs to score. Well, I mean, the Cubs left a bow load of people on base, so there's that, too. But, yeah, it's that was a, a thing that definitely was detrimental to their efforts today. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, just if he's going to be learning a new position, I mean, that needs to happen in the minors. Uh, like, I know that they needed a guy, you know, they needed a body there in the outfield, but, um, I mean, couldn't he play third base? I mean, is Vil is uh, Valbuena, like, doing that well that, like, oh, man, we can't take him out of the lineup? Man, Valbuena had a really nice play in the field today. I don't know if you watched today's game, Andy, but... I did watch most of it. I listened he to some kinda of it. He kind of did like a, uh, it was, he like went to his left, basically ended up in front of Castro and then like, like spun and I mean, just on a rope through the first bit, through the first base and nailed yeah. the runner. It was pretty good. But yeah, I, I think, you know, because Lee can play everywhere or in theory can play everywhere. He's having trouble with center field, obviously. But I, I think that like part of it, part of, 
it is that he can, because he can play these different positions, the Cubs are suddenly able to look at a few other players, like like maybe a Darwin Barney as far as trades go and stuff like that. Like he can play second base and he can play third. So, I mean, I, I think it's it's just nice to, I mean, remember DeRosa played all over the place, yeah. you know, in what I, I don't, 2008 or whatever that was. Um, yeah. And so I, I think, you know, I, I think once De Jesus comes back, you probably won't see Lake in center field anymore. I mean. And at that point, I mean, I, I don't know if you want to get into this now, but at that point, I th- really think they should send him back down. Especially really? if they're planning on using him in, in uh, the outfield. I, he, if he's only going to get, like, sporadic at bats. like I, Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I think he should be back in the minors. I kind of think... I think it means more that a trade is imminent, like they're using him in center field right now, but mm-hmm. like Valbuena or Barney, like somebody is going to get traded, and yeah. then he'll be able to slide in there. I don't think you, I don't think you pull him up. I don't know though. Heck, look at my predictions. I'm not. Well, gonna, yeah, and you're right. Gonna, a lot of experts, you know, think that's indicative of a trade, impending trade. You know, when that happens, but. You know, it's tough too. Like he would have a hard time, I suppose, getting work at Iowa too, and the out, especially in center field. You know, if they wanted to help him learn the position down there, because they have Jehun Ha down there. Well, and I, I really don't think center field is where he's going to end up. So no, I think it's no, no. just kind of a like well, a we need somebody to play guy. here, and we're going to. I mean, he's got the you know he he's rated as having the strongest infield arm in the Cubs system. He's gonna play in the infield. I don't think he's gonna play outfield. And right. so this is just kind of like, well, we we I guess they wanted to bring him up, give him major league at bats, and this is the spot that we have right now. Yeah. And I mean, I guess they their options are they could send him back to Iowa, or yeah, trade Barney, trade Valbuena. I don't know. Somebody's gonna get injured. If he's gonna get regular at bats, I'm all for him staying up. I mean, because. Yeah, um, I don't think they're gonna bring. I don't think they're gonna ha- let him sit on the bench and bring him in for like a pinch hit, a bat every couple days. I just that's not gonna happen. Yeah, that seems like folly. So I mean, it's hard to see them doing that. But um, as far as uh, at the plate, I mean, he's been jumping on first pitches all over the place and having some pretty good success doing so. He had a little bit of a rough game today. I think he only got one hit out of maybe five plate appearances. But yeah. But yeah, uh, I, he looks to be pretty exciting player offensively too. Uh, pretty fun batting stance, like the ramrod yeah. straight. <laughs> right. I think that's part of it is that I I think he's just kind of breathing a little bit of life into the second half of the season. And mm-hmm. really, I mean, like us Cubs fans, we need that. You know, we yeah. need something to make it to make the second half interesting. I'll tell um, you what. Like as soon as I saw he was going to be starting, um, the first you know on Friday first game back after the all-star break I was like all right I'm clearing the schedule because I'm gonna I'm gonna pay attention to this game yeah where I maybe wouldn't have done so if if that hadn't been the case yeah so you're right I mean it does make me more interested in watching when I can you know see some of these prospects you know getting a chance I guess yeah JD in the Northwoods is in our chat and uh, I'm assuming it's a he but I'm not sure uh, I have heard Did some people What's that? June Diane. <laughs> yeah. Um, it might be Jim Deshays. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've heard some people talking about Castro moving to the outfield. Do you guys think there is a chance of that happening? And I don't. I don't think you. Put, I don't think you put him and his attention span in the outfield. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a recipe true. for disaster. Yeah, that that's true. Um, I mean, I, he definitely has the athleticism where he'd be able to do it once he had a chance to gain some experience but it's not like one of those things where you can just be like all right here's what you do you know here's where you position yourself if this is the scenario or whatever it's something that they have to learn by doing so now that cast was a... well at I least just... i thought it was something you need to learn by doing in the minors but <laughs> and then uh, they put lake there so maybe not but do you trust castro to know who the cutoff guy is <laughs> um no Considering and, uh, he's not in the right, a lot of times he's not in the right place to be the cutoff guy. 
So, uh, yeah, in one game this series, I saw him uh, stick up one finger when there were two outs. So he was either, <laughs> he's, he was either like, thanking God for the play he just made, or he was wrongly assuming there was only one out. <laughs> Oh, so man. Uh, you're right. I mean, the attention span still seems to be, you know, in the background there. Yeah, I just don't. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, back to Lake. Um, I I think that it's going to be pretty common for fans to compare him to Castro. I think you know he's more of a base stealing threat. We've already seen him being pretty aggressive on the base path. Um. He's Did got you see more... that one slide where he uh, tried to steal second and he like slid and it was like a stone skipping on a lake kind of like. No, it was um, that was that in Saturday's game. Um. It was yeah yeah. Yeah, I didn't see that. <laughs> oh, it was rough, but yeah, his steal of third, like yeah, on the next pitch in the first game was pretty awesome. Yeah, he's got more power than Castro. Um, doesn't have a huge amount of power, but uh, Castro is probably better at making contact. And um, the one area that I think that the two are pretty similar in would be patience at the plate, and neither of them really have that. Uh, you which, know what, though? Like, watching him, I've been kind of impressed um, with some of the pitches he's, he's been able to lay off. Kind of. I don't know, really, because he lays off of them, but, man, he sure looks tempted by them. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he's way outside, like, and he's like, oh, take, I like, want that one. two steps in that direction still, yeah. <laughs> right, right. He did draw a walk, um, I think, in Saturday's game, um, but it did seem like he was able to lay off some of those tempting, um, you know, sweeping sliders. Yeah, I, I guess I just that was kind of one of the reasons that I expected the Cubs to leave him in the minor leagues was, or in Iowa, is to work on that discipline at the plate. Because over the last three years, he's on average he has about one walk for every three strikeouts. Yeah. So I mean, he just likes to get up there and hack, and you can you can tell that. I mean, the first at bat that you watch him, no matter when yeah. it is, you, I mean, he's swinging at the first pitch, he's ready to go. Yeah, and that's you know once there starts to be a you know quote unquote book on him, mm-hmm. um, that's going to be a problem. I mean, he's going to have to show the ability to adjust, and so that'll be interesting to see if he does stay up with the team um, once pitchers start you know, throwing him breaking pitches or off-speed stuff on the first pitch, you know, is he going to be able to have a good eye, you know, and, ha- you know, and show that he can lay off stuff and not be so aggressive Yeah. all the time? This is um, very premature in an extremely small sample size, but before today's game, so I don't have today's game factored in, but I was looking at his plate discipline just in the first two games. So in those two games, he swung at 62.5% of the pitches outside of the strike zone. <laughs> and the major league average is 30%. And then of pitches in the strike zone, he swung at 100% of them. <laughs> and that compares to the league average of 65%. So he's going to swing. And I don't think we're going to take him see him taking very many called strike threes. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know. I just, to me, he looks like in watching him in this first series, he just looks very tempted by everything that comes out of the pitcher's hand. <laughs> and and you gotta wonder, you know, are the Cubs are like the front office? Is the front office kind of tempted to include players like this in trades? You know, since they don't sort of fit the mold that they that they envision their team to have. You know, like right, they seem to value on base percentage and you know players who can give you a really disciplined at bat and things like that. So, um, I don't know. You wonder what, what they think about, you know, some of these guys that are prospects from the previous uh, regime. Right, yeah. JD, uh, in the chat, he says that uh, he heard that on the MLB network about Castro moving to the outfield, and he thought it seemed kind of bizarre, too. So. Yeah, that, that does strike me as strange. So, Andy, do you have any predictions for Lake here for the rest of the season? Well, hold on just a second, Andy. Yeah. Uh, battery was about to die. So we'll pick up with you giving a prediction. What kind of a prediction are you talking about? Like, I mean, just like... I don't know. I guess his performance, if he's up the whole okay. 
and you can mention maybe like you know based on him being up the whole season, right? I need to get a, you know, an, those AC power adapters for this thing. Uh oh. Hope I have double A batteries. Because <laughs> these two don't seem to be working. There's the title of the episode. I hope I have double A batteries. <laughs> Okay, I gotta go find some batteries. All right, I'll be right back. All right. I, uh, are you there? Mm-hmm. Oh, I have, um, nine cases, not cases, nine packages of AAA. Did you have to steal those from a remote? <laughs> no, I did find a, a couple double A's upstairs <laughs> in a package, but I have nine, and then, like, one of them is a 20-pack. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I probably have somewhere on 40 AAA batteries. <laughs> Okay, we're good. So go ahead and start off with your prediction. Um, so for Junior Lake, I just I think that um, he's gonna continue to have some uh, pretty pretty good success at the plate at least initially, and this is all if he stays up with the big league club. Um, but I feel like he's gonna struggle once you know pitchers kind of get a scouting report on him and. Um, He'll definitely struggle. I, I I really think you know, given his um, I don't know um, the fact that the play discipline is something that people have said he needs to develop and and get better at. So I think that's going to be a problem. And uh, whether he can make adjustments and um, kind of get back on track once he encounters that adversity, um, that'll be interesting to see. Yeah, and I think that's something that we see quite a bit is um, players get called up, initial success, and then, and then, like you said, once pitchers kind of figure them out, then, then you see kind of the, the rough patch. I mean, right. you know, I, I don't know. I, he, he's not going to come up. I think some people, some, like, fans expect them to come up and, like, 
play better than they even did at AAA. Yeah, you know? it's like, come on. And so, yeah, he's hitting in the sixth hole, and, and I, I got to think at that point in the lineup, a lot of pitchers, opposing pitchers, are like, okay, I'm going to throw first pitch strike, you know, because mm-hmm. and then this guy is just called up from AAA. I should be all right. I just need to get ahead in the count. And so he kind of took advantage of that in this series, and that's not going to continue to just happen once pitchers get to know who he is. Right, right. Yeah. I think my prediction, and this is kind of like a, I think he's, I think it's just going to be kind of an average type, you know, it, and like you said, this is if he stays up for the whole year, but I th- I could see him hitting like 270 maybe, you know, that I, I mean, I, I, he's not going to hit 300 and he's not going to hit 290, I don't think. I think yeah. like I would be satisfied if he hit 270, maybe had a few home runs and settled into the infield. And we could actually see that. I mean, I guess we did see how strong his arm was today when he airmailed it. But yeah. I'd like to see him, you know. Pl- I mean, I I personally haven't seen him play in the infield since 2009 when he was with Peoria. You know, yeah. so I would I would like to see that. But you, I'd like to see yeah, him I, third base, honestly. Yeah, I think um yeah I I think pitchers will learn his weaknesses. And I think we'll see him go through some learning situations, some bumps in the road. And I also think it's important to remember that while Lake is an exciting prospect, um, according to the MLB rankings, he was the number nine prospect in the system heading into the season. So if we see Lake struggle some here in the big leagues this year, it doesn't mean that the strategy of building the organization through the draft and through the farm system is a failed approach. You know, I think... Right. I kind of see Junior Lake as, I guess, something like a just a little taste test. You know, right. he's kind of like going to Baskin Robbins. You just get that little, <laughs> you know, just a little. <laughs> you're not sure if you want to try the new ice cream, but you'll give it a try. And well, what flavor would he represent? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I have no idea. I think this is all part of the Cubs' plan to uh, put together an all Dominican team. Like, wouldn't it be funny if? <laughs> We're just going to get all Dominican players, um, and you can tell that's their plan because of their new facilities in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> that's where spring training will be in a couple of years. Yeah. No, but I think, um, I, I just hope that, like, he, if he does struggle, you don't have these people like, see, this is what happens when you try to build from within. But you will you have. Know. You will I know, have those people, and already do, partly because of just They've seen Rizzo and and uh, Castro struggle already. Well, and they saw they saw um, Vitters and Brett Jackson. You know, yeah, it's I guess Rizzo like... doesn't count as necessarily building from within, but yeah, yeah. When you see those guys, people are like, yep, this is what happens. We gotta, we have the money. Let's go out there and buy a team yeah. again. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I think um, those I think same people gonna... don't want the jumbotron too. It's like, yeah. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, I just, uh, I, uh, I hope that he does well just for his own confidence, and because I don't want to hear people say, "Oh, see, that's you know, that's why you don't build from within. You got to go out your big market team, go spend shitloads of money, and get <laughs> nothing out of it, <laughs> and then suck for ten more years after you put that team together." <laughs> right, right. So I, I hope that Lake can kind of work on his patience. And I, I know that with some players, it's that impatient at the plate that kind of makes them successful. I mean, it's just part of their game. I think that's kind of, you know, pitch pitch selection is never going to be Castro's strong suit. But that's, you know, I, I mean, I'm not going to draw a direct comparison, but look at somebody like Vladimir Guerrero. But, you know, part of what made him good was that it didn't matter where the pitch was, he could make contact, you know. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think... Hopefully he can kind of rein in his impatience without losing the, I, I guess, players just rely on their athleticism when they're like that, I think. Yeah, and, you know, maybe it is, it's pretty important to have a lineup that has sort of a balance of the, that type of player, and then you're, you're going to have players like De Jesus, you know, who will give you a more disciplined at bat or whatever. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think... It, you know that that would help keep a pitcher, um, kind of uh, thinking. 
is the if you're facing kind of yeah if you just get your straight up like I'm gonna work the pitch count I'm gonna you know this is how the, the uh, my approach at the plate if you have an entire lineup like that I, I would think that I don't know you're not you're not really keeping the pitcher on their toes right right I kind of wonder if this strategy with Lake could be a hint as to how we'll see the Cubs handle like Javier Baez you know like I said earlier. I assumed that the front office would stick to keeping guys at AAA for a full year. They've talked about that. But I don't know. Maybe with an organization that is relying so heavily on the farm system, maybe they're willing to short that, shorten that time up a little bit just to, to kind of move things along a little bit more quickly. Yeah, I mean, if they're flooding the system with prospects, which they've done through all these international signings too, I mean, they might be willing to kind of try to push prospects through a little bit quicker and just, you know, see who gels and who doesn't. Yeah, because I think that, you know, if you're looking at it right now, I mean, people are saying, oh, 2015. I don't think so. Because you're talking like, you know, uh, Soler and uh, Almora and players like that. Like, that's kind of when they're expected to hit the major league team. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think you're going to go out and, and compete for a World Series with a bunch of rookies. And, and yeah. guys that have been on the team for one, maybe two years. You know, Baez, maybe one year. I, I just, I don't know. I don't think, it, and so it's like, okay, so you're going to look at 2016, 2017, somewhere in that time frame, and maybe they're just thinking, well, you know what, let's let these guys kind of learn on the job. And maybe they know, I mean, we know how into numbers and stats and everything these guys are. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe they know, like, well, certain players can go up and, and learn at the major league level and kind of do the finishing touches of their development that they would get in the minor league system and you're, instead yeah, get you're it with Chicago. Right. They ha- they ha- they've identified the guys who are going to be fast movers through the system and the guys who are going to take, you know, one year at each level or whatever. You know, th- I think they know that. Yeah. And, you know, I think players like Chris, Chris Bryant, for example, has been identified as a guy that uh, I think they're looking at as a person who can – player who can kind of move through the system fairly quickly and be ready maybe sooner than some of the other ones. Yeah. Yeah, because I think what you expect out of a high draft pick like that. Right. And I think that they know that like, yes, they're kind of taking the long approach to this, but you can't take, you can't take like a a six, seven, eight year approach to it. You know, you still kind of have to keep it within a time frame that's going to, the people can buy into, but then at the same time, you can develop it how you want it, so. I'm already kind of depressed a little bit about, you know, like when we first first and second year of doing the podcast, I mean, we were looking at 2014, 20, you know, 2014 as being a year that they could start to be successful, you know, so now, like, okay, it's more reasonable to maybe expect, you know, 2016 or, you know, something like that. So you mean back in the like Jim Hendry days and stuff in like well, 2009? I, yeah, well, toward the end of Jim the Jim Hendry days. Um, yeah. When well, I think the, at the they had that good draft, you know, when he was just leaving. Um, and I think that was the Baez draft, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they had a pretty good draft that year, and then and then so we're you know we're thinking, okay, you know, and then we have the new front office come in, and I think we kind of identified a 2014 for some reason as being... Yeah, I think we kind of looked at that, but I'm not sure that we understood at that point like how much it was going to be built from within. I think we still kind of thought like, oh, well, okay, so you get a couple of those pieces, and then they'll go out and buy those big free agents. And now, I mean, I think they're really kind of setting this team up. So like in 2015 or 2016, like they may only need... One, one or two, two free pieces, agent, free agents, yeah. Or yeah, whatever. they're not they're not gonna have to go out and and they have they're gonna have these guys that like under club control and you know fairly cheap. I I don't know. Yeah. I I I'm willing to wait. I think we've already. I well, yeah. I mean, obviously we're willing to wait, but I mean, I just we we've we've gone through a number of seasons here of just. Horrible baseball. It's been t- <laughs> really tough to watch, and it starts to wear on you, you know. I love it that we started this podcast after the last playoff year. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Like, why couldn't we have started a year earlier so we would have at least, you yeah, know, like we've 
we have podcasted through the darkest days. Right. Like how how easy is it? I mean, how much it's going to be so easy to do the podcast when when they're playing well, you know? Since we've right. experienced, you know, what it's like, like and then everybody's going to start a podcast on the Cubs. Right, <laughs> we'll just get yeah. lost in the mix. Oh, uh, jeez. Yeah, and so, yeah, we're trying to come up with blog posts, you know, to write about them, you know, back <laughs> when we were writing blog posts and, and trying to think about what we're going to talk about. And, man, it's just going to be pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Not that it's not fun now. I'm not trying to give listeners the wrong impression. <laughs> I, I, I enjoy it, you know, but it's just... Sometimes uh, when you see the... Well, it will be fun to talk about what's... I mean, think about, you know, when we were blogging a lot more. You know, when we when we didn't do the podcast yet, in, in like 2007, 2008, when we were, you know, just blogging. blogging. I mean, we were putting stuff up all the time because it was just exciting to talk about. And right. I, I think that right now, anybody that's listening to, to us and... Cubs fans in general, all you're doing is talking about these guys that are still a year to three years away. And so, I don't know. When they finally get here, it'll be fun to talk about them. The anticipation is killing me. (laughs) It's literally killing me. I might die. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let's move on from that then. (laughs) Um, So, uh, Andy, it looks like the Cubs are a step closer to renovating Wrigley. Yeah, um, the uh, signage was appro- I'm sorry, the uh, renovation plans w- uh, were approved um, by the uh, Chicago Plan Commission, and so there's a couple more commissions, committees, councils to have approved the plans. But it sounds like once the plan was approved by the Chicago Plan Commission, it's um, pretty much guaranteed to get through these other, like the city council and zoning committee. So the the uh, renovation plans are pretty much a go, which means that they can start right in the off season and get going on this stuff. And um, they in, they did encounter like a lot of um, kind of um, opposition from Alderman Tom Tunney throughout the process. And so it, he's it seems like in the last meeting he capitulated fairly easy and uh, um, and they agreed on this this renovation plan with some compromises and some revisions and things like that. So it's cool. Uh, they're actually going to get started on this stuff. Recently, the out, outfield signage was approved. The, the uh, 4,560 square foot scoreboard or jumbotron, and then also a new 650 foot see-through sign in right field, which is going to be 80% larger than that Toyota sign. <laughs> So they're going to have new signage, and the Cubs apparently wanted six total signs, <laughs> but um, Tunney was saying that the signs would be too close to the homes in the neighborhood. Like, people don't want to look out their living room window and see, you know, a uh, huge sign for Tampax Pearl or whatever. They could move. You could yeah. move if you wanted, you know. <laughs> there, 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 I don't know if they know this in Wrigleyville, but there are worst views. There, there are worse views in the city. <laughs> I don't know. I did Move down by the railroad tracks. Um, right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, there were just a lot of uh, aspects of the plan that Tony questioned, um, like the signage and the size of the signs. The rooftop owners were a factor. Uh, most recently, they had this plan to have a pedestrian bridge from the new hotel to the ballpark, and they initially weren't going to enclose the whole thing. So his question was, well, aren't fans going to be tempted to throw stuff off of the bridge and stuff like that? And so some of the questions like he raised were seem valid, but it, it yeah, just but like why is it like what a weird thing? He just had I don't a know. question. Why is he so worried about that? They just seem to have questions for everything. Yeah, I, know, I, know. I don't know about you. I don't want to get hit, hit hit get hit in the head with like a half full thing of helmet nachos. So I don't think it would happen. <laughs> But anyway, so they've they've come to terms with everything, and you know there are some concessions that the Cubs made with their plan. But for the most part, it seems to be intact, um, with some minor modifications, or some modifications. I shouldn't say minor, like six signs down to two is pretty major modification. But um, man, if I'm the, if I'm the Cubs, I am funding someone's alderman campaign. To beat. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm pumping like millions of dollars into their <laughs> campaign to get rid of So I don't know if you saw this, Andy, but so he, he agreed to the negotiated deal, 
But then his office received phone calls after the Pearl Jam concert on Friday night. Oh, geez. And there's an article in the Chicago Tribune that said that uh, he said it's too early to tell whether that will affect his negotiations, which I don't, like, okay. I don't understand, like, it's already kind of been agreed to or whatever, but well, I guess the issue was that the concert went to, like, one thirty in the morning. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I can understand that that would be a nuisance for the neighborhood. You know, I got, at one thirty in the morning, I mean, I, you know, I have kids. I can understand that. Right. Um, but I still say... You live in Wrigleyville, and your property is worth buku bucks because of Wrigley Field and the Cubs. So, right. if you want to move, then move. But and I mean, you, I, I you had to know kind of what you're in for when you move yeah, there. You know, if you I think the concert seventy years or something like that, then yeah, you know, I, get annoyed. But I think the concert thing is a little bit different because that that is fairly a fairly new thing to Wrigleyville, and I mean an event in Wrigleyville that's not the World Series that has people walking around until 1.30 in the morning like that I can I can kind of understand and I don't I don't I personally don't like the concerts at Wrigleyville um I guess part of it might be that they haven't brought anyone in that I would want to see uh and I, but as a Cubs fan I I, know, I realize it's a money maker for the Cubs and that will go to help putting a better team on the field. Right, and that's what but, it's all about, you know, when when we're talking about the signage and everything and people are so loath to accept it and saying, well, you know, the Rickets are rich, they don't need, you know, they don't need this additional income and things like that. Well, yeah, so are the uh, you know, most of the other owners and the right. major leagues and and so if you want to and they all have this signage, they all have this income coming in from advertisers and things that Wrigley and you know the Cubs are missing out on and so if we it want did, to continue it, to be a, like a superior you know a team that has an advantage when it comes to being able to spend money then we got to do things like this and um they didn't inherit the Cubs they paid like 900 million dollars for right. them, so. it's a big investment and they want to <laughs> yeah, see a return they would like to make too. some money back like they want the Cubs to win obviously yeah but they also don't want you know, to have their investment go down the drain either. Yeah, and I mean, we've obviously talked about the Wrigley renovations before and everything like that, but I still say if you did not renovate Wrigley, that building isn't going to stand much longer. I mean, it it needs it, you know. Yeah. Be beyond giving a better experience for the people there, that building needs to be updated and renovated. Now, whether or not that includes a massive jumbotron i mean that's up for debate i guess but right. i still think that it, it had been that that poor building has been neglected for yeah. a long time yeah and it's it was pretty much to the point where it's either that or move to the suburbs so like if you like the locale and you like wrigley itself then you know get on board yeah um do we want to comment at all on the trade rumors i kind of don't want to because they change so much. Yeah. <laughs> and anything that we say is gonna be like, you know, the the uh, Garza to the Rangers deal was like ninety nine point four percent, and now there's like other teams involved, and I don't know. I just yeah, it kind of ticked me off that I was like paying so much attention to Twitter and whatever, and then it and then it fell through, and I'm like, yeah, I'm an idiot. Just wait till it happens and stop checking everything obsessively it's it's ridiculous um and the thing to keep in mind is there's over a week until the trade deadline and so the cubs are going to make more moves i mean that's guaranteed and and uh they're going to do it when they feel it's the right time and they get the best offers i think it's really good that they uh that they are willing to kind of listen to what other teams have to offer and yeah. things like that, rather than just rushing ahead just to try to get him traded before his next start. I mean, that's a right. a factor. You know, he's supposed to start tomorrow night against the Diamondbacks. That concerns me a little bit because he's just like sitting on top of a mountain of success right now with his start since he's come back from injury. And so hopefully he pitches well tomorrow night and, you know, just relax everybody. The Cubs are going to... Hopefully he can like you know, focus on pitching well and, and maybe stay away from Twitter for a couple days. Yeah, that seems like that would be a great idea. <laughs> Somebody would just smash his phone with a hammer. 
but yeah. So, so uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, so I guess the stance that we're going to take is just kind of like wait and see what happens, and then, you know, we'll comment on it and we'll talk about it in detail once we know, you know, what the deal was and what the Cubs got, and then, you know, that's really when it's worth talking about. Yeah, if we said anything now, and I mean, all, all we can really say is like what everyone else is saying, because nobody knows, and so anything we say now, it, recording this Sunday evening, by tomorrow afternoon when you're listening to it could be outdated. So Yeah. I mean we're not gonna talk about it. We're not gonna talk about how <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if we just like emphasize like how much we're not gonna talk about it and then we go on to just keep going. Going and going. Uh kinda like we're doing. Um <laughs> I I mentioned that the Junior Lake prediction that went poorly for me on the last episode. In that episode I also predicted that Soriano would come back from the all star game cold. And then he hit a home run on Friday, the first game back. So I was wrong on those two. But I'm pretty sure in that episode I predicted that Strope would become the closer if and when the Cubs traded Kevin Gregg. And Dale Swain told the media that it is that's a real possibility. And so I, I'm going to look at I was one for three. And I think that a 333 uh, batting average is pretty respectable. So why not? Respectable prediction. <laughs> One of the only percentage. jobs where thirty percent success rate is acceptable <laughs> and actually lauded. <laughs> um. So let's uh real quick here. Let's look at some questions from listeners. Uh, Nick from Virginia slash Wisconsin or Wisconsin or Virginia. I'm not sure. Uh. <laughs> He says, uh, my opinion is that Junior Lake was brought up because another team wanted to see him against MLB pitching before trading for him. What say you? And Nick kind of cites that the Cubs didn't give him that full year in AAA, and that's maybe proof that this is that's what the case is. I mean, that doesn't sound like crazy far-fetched, but it does a little bit just because teams scout so heavily and you know, are pretty good at, I feel, are, you know, projecting what a guy is going to be, and I don't know. I, I don't think that, I can have a hard time accepting that scenario. What about you? Yeah, I don't think so. I think that if, if, if you have a piece that someone wants, you make them take the risk on it. You know, you don't, you don't put a guy on trial and bring him up sooner that you wanted just to show that he's good. Right, it's such a crapshoot too, and they're gonna get such a limited sample size. I mean, yeah. So yeah, let's have them hit it for a week. You know, that doesn't really prove anything. Yeah, and maybe I could see something like that happening if, like, it's a prospect that's at low A, and maybe they want to see him at high A just to kind of, you know, something like that. But I think if you have a guy in Iowa at Triple A, and you know, and you see how he's doing, I think you can project that pretty easily to to major league. Yeah, I mean. With, with some scouting and some more information. Yeah, um, but that's an interesting thought. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason, he sent us a picture of people sitting in the front row seats at a ballpark and then the following comment. This really must have got under his skin because he, he, he sent it to us a couple comments on it. Um, he said, these pieces of dog feces didn't stand for the national anthem and were sitting in our seats at Isotopes Park. This is not the first time we've had group tickets and needed to ask people to move from our seats. Normally, we try to be polite, but this time my wife didn't even try. The woman muttered something under her breath as they were leaving. I wasn't there, and this could have resulted in my first ejection from a baseball game. <laughs> not that it mattered, uh, not that it would have mattered this time, but is there an etiquette for bumping people from your seats? It really pisses me off to see uh, people that bought $6 berm seats in the seats that I paid for, but I try not to make a scene. So I, I think instead of using the hashtag first world problems, this is hashtag minor league problems. <laughs> <laughs> not to be a miss, you know, you, it's hard not to venture into misanthrope territory here, but I mean, people kind of suck sometimes. Uh, but that being <laughs> said, um, it sucks that people would do that, you know, just go sit in random seats, um, especially like at the at the beginning of a game, which is kind of what it sounded like. Um, but every time I've run into that scenario when you talk to somebody who's in your seat, and, you know, I've never really had that good seats. I guess that's a good caveat to mention, like, at any game I've ever <laughs> been to in my life. 
like even like at the river band it's low A where it's like I don't know I could pay eight bucks and sit right behind a home plate or I could pay seven <laughs> or I could use this ticket I got from my life insurance agent. Um, well, you did. We had dugout seats. Yeah. Well, the yeah. Dugout I've suite. Got, there have been a couple exceptions to that. There have been a couple times I've had really great seats, but. For the most part, like when I've run into that scenario, they're always, oh yeah, sorry. You know, they're always very apologetic and they move right, and, right. you know, no big deal. But if you have somebody like getting strong with you about it and like muttering stuff when they're getting up, you know, you can go piss up a rope. You know, get out of here. You yeah. Garbage. These are, the, and that's kind of the situation that you'll run into with like half-filled ballparks that don't monitor their seats. I mean, you couldn't get away with that at Wrigley Field or a major league ballpark, but I don't know. I'm pretty non-confrontational. I don't know. I, I'm kind of like, I'm mean, I'm to the extremes. So I'm either like not confrontational or I'm a real hothead. Um, so if it was me and there were like empty seats around there, I probably would have just kind of adjusted the group. Like I probably would have just let them stay there. But if there weren't available seats, I probably just would have pointed out that they were in our seats. But yeah, I think you're right. People are just kind of crummy, and the time I, I especially like uh, in the last couple of years, going to a lot of Peoria Chiefs games, uh, especially when I was with my family. I mean, we would just buy berm seats because our kids just wanted to play in like the play the kids area, you know. So I'm not going to buy box seats for that. Um, but then if like we decided to go and sit in the regular seats and watch, then um, I mean, we would just kind of go and sit really as close as we could get, but usually I would try to sit, like, further down so I wasn't, like, right behind home plate. You know, I kind of, like, like, I did that a lot when I would sit, like, right behind the Chiefs bullpen area mm-hmm. just to kind of, like, watch and listen to what's going on and stuff. But With all this being said, there have been, a you know, a couple instances where I've moved seats, like, in the ninth inning of a game or, you know, yeah. eighth or ninth inning when it's clear, like, that seats are empty but I would I you know I would never do that if it was earlier in the game and I oh, just yeah. don't I don't usually do that in general anyway but I think it and I think if I did do that and there was like someone like looking at their tickets anywhere near me I would already like start apologizing <laughs> like moving <laughs> like even if it wasn't like their seats I'd be like oh I'm sorry I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh Troy asks who will be the next cub hitting 300 <laughs> Somebody next season, maybe. <laughs> you think? I don't know. I think if Castro can hit fastballs with regularity, I think it's him. Yeah. Like I could see him getting back to that point, but teams have caught on that Castro can hit curveballs and change-ups and that he has trouble with a fastball, and he's seeing a lot more of them this year, and I think that's that's probably one of the main reasons that he's struggling. But I think that you know we've seen him hit 300, and so I know he can do it, but yeah, he's got to... He's got to be able to adjust that aspect of it. Yeah, I, I don't think we'll ever see an entire season of Castro hitting 300, but I think that you know at some point in the season, next season or the season after that, you know he'll be hitting 300, no doubt. Um, but yeah, that's that's a good point too. Like I I was looking at the Cardinals lineup, you know when the Cubs played the Cardinals, and you see they have four or five guys hitting at least 300, and then you look at the Cubs and they have like two guys hitting over 250. You know, it's like, <laughs> good God, this sucks. Yeah, I mean, Rizzo's not going to hit 300. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there's nobody right now. I don't. I mean, I'm trying to think of. Valbuena is not. Darwin Barney, no. No. Uh, well, Lake was hitting what, like 295 in Iowa, I think. Yeah. But probably not. No. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I guess we'll see, but and the guys that should be high average guys, you know, De Jesus, Barney, you know, they're not. <laughs> yeah, right. He's not. Uh, Ryan from Tipton, Iowa. He says after last year's Brian Lahare, or I'm sorry, after last season's Brian Lahare second half disappearance after making the All Star game, how do you think Wood finishes the second half, and do you think that he would be prone to a similar fate in any scenario? Um, I I say no way. I mean, I think he'll he'll definitely um, go through some rough spots, but I think that he'll maintain a relatively high level of success this season. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would definitely not put Lahair in any category with Travis Wood. I mean, 
Lahara was an all-star because he had a great first half of a season, but we knew from day one of that 2012 season that he was only going to be with the Cubs until they brought up Anthony Rizzo. And um, they managed to get him some time in the outfield because he was doing so well offensively in the first half of the season. But, I mean, Brian LaHare is not all-star material, and it was essentially a fluke from a 29-year-old rookie. And, I don't know, I don't think... I don't think Travis Wood's going to be going out and getting a quality start eight out of every ten games or whatever his rate is right now. Right, right. But I, I think from the get-go, this front office identified him as a piece that they would like to be a part of their foundation, and he's pitched really well despite his record, and he deserved that all-star appearance. And yeah. I don't know. I, I, I would be willing to put big money on that he will not be playing in Japan next year like LaHare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That, that, that's a great uh, point, though. I mean, as I see him going forward this season as being, you know, like a 65%, 70% quality start rate type of guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan also asked, uh, do you ever consider doing another baseball card show, or was that a walk-off home run type of thing <laughs> one time only? <laughs> Sweet. That should have been our last episode, in other words? Or? <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you do it again, is it possible to do one with just Cubs cards? I would love to see the competition for the mullet, porn, mustache, and chest hair of a 1988 Topps J. Baller. <laughs> um, we should consider doing another baseball card episode. Maybe a slightly different format. Yeah. Um, but if you haven't heard, if you're newer to our podcast and you haven't heard it, that was in 2009, our first season of podcasting. And I'll post a link to that episode in the show notes for this episode. Um, I don't know. See, and, and um, I talk about that on this episode, that all of my baseball cards got stolen. So I, I basically have nothing. <laughs> hmm. So, um, But I could go buy some packs of, like, you know, those older those older packs and or get my brothers or something like that. But we really should do it. I mean, that was a lot of fun. So we should do another baseball card episode and maybe have a slightly different twist to it. And I was thinking it'd be kind of a fun thing to do, like um, maybe like that week between Christmas and New Year's and like do it in a night where people could like, I don't know. It would be kind of fun to do a, because uh, I think with like our Google chat or, you know, our Google Hangout, like you can have up to 10 people. So it'd be kind of fun to like maybe get like three or four other people involved. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, I, I highly enjoyed that podcast, and I, I actually think that's a pretty. I could listen to that podcast, uh, you know, again and again, if I have the visual of the cards in front of me, which we had a post that had that too. So. Right. I thought that was a pretty fun episode. It was a lot of fun. Um. And then, uh, oh, and um, if you go to our Facebook page, you can, and I forgot to mention this, you can send us your questions uh, or topic suggestions. You can email them to me, Corey, C-O-R-E-Y, at IVMV.com, or you can post them uh, usually the morning of our, like on Sunday mornings, I'll post on our Facebook page and just ask for any questions that you have. So, you, Or you can send them to us anytime on our Facebook page. Um, and uh, Ryan posted a picture of that, J Baller 88 tops, which I don't like, you know, I, I obviously remember, I remember the 88 Cubs team, but I do not remember J Baller. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this last question is from Jane, my mom, and she texted me uh, this, this afternoon. She sent me a photo of the Midwest league standings and asked, what's the deal with Kane County? I thought they were supposed to be our future. And Kane County has a record of six and twenty-one in the second half of the season. That's a winning percentage of point two two two, and they are twelve and a half games out of first place. Yeah, I mean, you know the saying, "Losing the forest for the trees." Um, well, I think like when you're looking at the farm system, you actually have to look at the individual trees. <laughs> yeah, like the, the forest isn't the important part. I, I think you really have to pay attention to the you know like the highly touted assets that the Cubs have and you got to remember too that you know Kane County and every level in the farm system have players that'll never make it, you mm -hmm. know, past that level. And so you have these like guys who are going to be a part of the Cubs' future, and then you know a huge crowd of players who aren't going to be a part of the Cubs' future playing together. And so these teams, I don't know, it's it just kind of is like catching lightning in a bottle when they actually 
are really effective teams. It means that they probably have you know some of these highly uh, touted ass- assets playing together. And so you know right now in Kane County, you do have a few of the you know what we would probably think of as the future of the Cubs playing down there. You know like Albert Almora and um, you know Dan Vogelbach and players like that, but. Um, the team is largely comprised of players who, you know, maybe someday will be like a journeyman player in the in the majors or at best, yeah, at best, or will you know just won't make it at all or won't pan out pan out at all. So I, I guess that's my answer. Yeah, and they and they're bad right now for sure, but they were better in the first half of the season. They had a record of thirty and thirty six in the first half. Um, I think in this situation right now. I think you're right, Andy. And then also another quick explanation is that explanation is that the the uh, the majority of these players that will never reach the major leagues right now, King County has those on their pitching staff. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, they have pretty bad pitching, and as a team, they have the second to worst ERA in the Midwest League. They have an ERA over four and a half. Um, but yeah, I think we should focus on. The individual performances, uh, Albert Almora, obviously one of the top Cubs prospects, he's batting 330, and if he had enough at bats, he would rank third in the Midwest League, right, be- right behind uh, Byron Buxton and ahead of Carlos Correa. So um, that's pretty good company. Yeah. Um, and Dan Vogelbach is hitting just under 300, which for power hitter is <laughs> pretty good. Um, he has 14 home runs and 62 RBIs. Rock shoulders is you know he's hitting for power. He and Delario is playing fairly well, getting a lot of extra base hits. And there is some de- decent pitching on the team. I mean, Pierce Johnson, he's another top prospect. That yeah. Usually you'll see him ranked between you know number five and number ten on the the prospect list for the the organization, and he's pitching well. Um, but yeah, I think it's just all about. There's just too many, especially like if you don't have a lot of talent with the pitching staff, a team's just not going to be that good. Right, and then, you know, that's been identified as a weakness of the Cubs system, too, the past couple of years, and the Cubs are definitely working on that. It's getting better, but that still is a weakness. There's no denying it. Um, yeah. So you got to have a good rotation to have a good team and a successful team. And so as we see the system infused with more pitching prospects, more arms, uh, it's going to get better. So, that, yeah, that's a good point, too. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a break. Uh, but before we do, you can help support our podcast if you shop on Amazon.com by going to ivmb.com slash Amazon, and they'll give us a percentage of your purchase at no cost to you. And we would like to thank uh, all of you that have purchased through our site, and we do appreciate your support. So when we come back, we will have some Internet muscle flexes, and we will read through your entries for this week's photo caption contest. So we will be right back. We'd like to thank you for listening to the IVMB podcast and have tried to make it easy for you to find it. You can listen on our site, www.ivnv.com. You can listen and download in iTunes, or if you have an iPhone or an Android phone, check out the apps that allow you to download or stream our episodes. We are on Stitcher, Pocket Cast, TuneIn, and many more. If you do have an iTunes account, you can help us out by going and giving us a rating and a review. We appreciate your feedback, and thanks for listening to the IVNV Podcast. All right, well, we have gotten really late on this episode. I just kind of looked at the timer. I was like, man. Sort of you know, surprising. That's, that's just it. You, you get Kurt off of this thing, and, <laughs> you know, both of us just feel so much more comfortable to, you know, actually just, I don't know. We're not holding anything back when Kurt's on here. You know, he's just so easily offendable. <laughs> I don't know. 
Uh, well, Kurt usually steps in here with his scary stat of the week, but since he's not here, uh, we figured that, I don't know, rather than us come up with one, we would look at some internet muscle flexes. And um, these are statements usually left on, or they are left on the, the uh, comment areas of articles on Cubs.com. They're comments that are, I guess, designed to kind of flex the muscles of the commenter and not uh, not just to prove someone wrong or display some, like, supreme intelligence, but to do it in a pretty obnoxious way. <laughs> so I have three. Mine are pretty weak. I'm, I'm just not... You guys are so much better at finding these. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but uh, my, th- my three are, like, just very, like, short one-sentence things that just kind of made me laugh. I don't know why, but... I don't yeah, know. hit me. I want to hear them. Okay, I'll do my three. Um, so this is on... All three of these came from... I think all three of them did uh, from the article about Junior Lake coming up. Uh, right. So the first one is, Marshall is God, Mahalam is Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, Man, I wish God were having a better season. <laughs> yeah. Um... The second one here is tourniquet tighter, please. <laughs> I don't know. I guess just stop the bleeding. Maybe it's just the commenter is just ha- really having a hard time getting through this season and just <laughs> needs it pulled a little bit tighter. And then the third one here is you're just another negative Nancy and probably voted for Obama. <laughs> <laughs> This is like bringing something that's incongruent into like being a fan of a sports team. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, right. That's so cool. <laughs> uh, well, um, all of my <laughs> internet muscle flexes were posted on the article about the renovations being approved, the renovation oh, okay. plan being approved. So here's a uh, uh, couple that go together. Um, the first commenter says, I sent my season tickets back and told them to jam them up Tom Ricketts' ass. <laughs> <laughs> and then here's the response to that. Wow, that will teach them. I don't know if Ricketts is going to come back from that. Oh, wait, the next person in line has already picked up some season tickets. Way to get out right when the club is going in a new and promising direction. Your loyalty is impressive. <laughs> I just like that one because the first person got flexed so hard right there. Yeah, it's like he tried to flex and then he got flexed. He got flexed. Sometimes that happens in life, you know. <laughs> right. I think you're doing the flexing and then you get flexed on. So. It, and usually, if you do flex, you're gonna get flexed on. Yeah. I mean, it's it's gonna happen because you've opened yourself up. Right. So you know there is something to be said for meekness when it comes to right. the internet. But and at any rate, um, I have one more. Okay. And it reads. I think Joni Mitchell is more appropriate. Pave paradise, put up a parking lot. The demise of heaven has begun. I hope I'm dead by the time it's complete. If not, the completion of this unnecessary abomination will do the job. Anybody who, Anyone who buys into Ricketts hyperbole is an idiot. I, I like how they brought up Ricketts hyperbole when their whole co- comment is hyperbole. It's like <laughs> <laughs> the demise of heaven has begun. <laughs> Well, and, you know, this person, this commenter hopes that they're dead by the time this is finished. You, you could speed the process along. Like, you're kind of, you could be in charge of that. Oh, my you know? gosh. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, you don't hear too many people, like, wishing their own, like, death over the next three or four years. Like, yeah. well, <laughs> I, I hope I'm dead. <laughs> Before I have to look at that video board. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's like everything else will still be there. Like... The ivy is still going to be there, you know, the, the organ music is still going to be there, and oh, there's going to be a few more stats out there to look at. So, uh, yeah, somebody's like, well, what about your grandkids? Jumbotron, man. <laughs> no way. <laughs> well, you know what? I hope you're dead, too, by the time it's complete. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, we have, like, a ton of captions for this week's photo caption contest and I think the reason for that is is that we're giving away this DVD uh, again it's the MLB bloopers double header and uh, just your you know your typical 
not typical. I mean, it is really funny, and um, it's put together uh, pretty well. I, I like, um, I, I think this is kind of, you don't, I mean, I think like, I don't know about you, Andy, but like when I was a kid, I used to watch This Week in Baseball, and I kind of liked seeing that behind-the-scenes type stuff, like hearing actual like conversations with players and things like that. And this DVD has some of that stuff, which really, I, I don't know. I mean, you just don't see it much anymore. You yeah, know, you don't you don't see like kind of the practical jokes and the the horseplay and just that kind of you know them giving each other a hard time and and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, there's a nostalgia to it. I'm sorry, I just saw the card of Jay Baller online. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like yeah, there's a sentimentality and nostalgic factor to it that it just yeah reminds me of how much I loved like blooper stuff and behind the scenes stuff as a kid. Yeah. So I was a huge football follies fan. Um, so uh, we we post these photos on Facebook and Google Plus. So you can go to ibmb.com/slash/facebook or ibmb.com/slash/google plus to see these pictures. We put them up every week. Um. And basically, uh, we just want your your photo caption for it. So um, I don't have the Facebook pulled up, Andy, but I'll try, and then maybe take over at some point so you don't have to read them all. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> um, my voice just cracked again. That was awesome. <laughs> oh, but I forgot to describe the photo too. So it, this is a photo of Travis Wood at this year's All Star Game. It looks like some sort of media. Um, you know, press event, and suddenly cleaned up. I mean, he he looks like a totally different guy, and uh, has a someone is holding a Fox News microphone in front of him. Uh, <laughs> it's not plugged into anything. It's just like it's like a prop microphone. They're just like making him think that the media cares about <laughs> what he has to say. <laughs> and I haven't really looked through these entries yet, but I wonder if anybody draws attention to his watch. Yeah, it's massive. It's a really large watch. But uh, all right, well, let's get into the entries. Um, yeah. The first one comes from Steve, and it reads, Oh, I was supposed to shear the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he sheared himself. Yeah. Terry wrote, I got some horsey sauce in my beard, and it left a horrible stink, so I had to shave it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, a stink reference and yeah. a horsey sauce. Sounds wow. good. Um, Carrie. Terry, lo Terry loves the horsey sauce. Yeah. I, I need to go back and listen to that episode, but anyway. Carrie wrote, People were asking me for my autograph because they thought I was Mike Trout. I had to put up this sign with my name to avoid further confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew wrote, I only use that disguise when I'm wearing a Cubs uniform. <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's a slow burn one. I kind of like that. Uh, Matthew also wrote, "Oh, there's a game. I thought this was networking to find my next team, so I cleaned up." <laughs> <laughs> it's like speed dating for <laughs> baseball players that want to find a new team. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jeffrey wrote, "Oh, the facial hair. Yeah. Once I got to the point where I was clearly the best of this bad team, I had to associate myself with better ways." <laughs> Uh, Nick, longtime contributor um, and listener, wrote, So this is like Super Bowl Media Day, only much lamer. <laughs> <laughs> he also has a couple more. The second one reads, Yeah, I do think there's something going on between Mario and Mariano Rivera and, and Bud Selig. Did you see how long they hugged when he was awarded the MVP? There was a rumor going around the NL locker room that Seelig was cleaning out his ear with his tongue, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Nick has another one here. Fox News? Oh, hey, uh, yeah, I guess I don't really have a comment on how or why the liberals in this country are ruining the game of baseball. I can't agree that they should all be murdered, but I can say that I really enjoy Cheetos. Damn, man, this media day shit is harder than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Terry again has another caption it reads yeah the team wanted to send Marmel here as a joke but they traded him before the game and decided they send the guy he's screwed over the most this season <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh, alright uh, 
Jason has a couple. His first one reads, I asked Bruce, Bruce Bochy to let me p- pinch hit in the eighth, but he didn't want to ruin Mariano's moment. <laughs> <laughs> and Jason's next caption says, Reporter, so how does it feel to be an all-star, Wood? It feels out there. I mean, it's a major rush. I mean, it feels radical in kind of a tubular sort of way, but most of all, it feels out there. <laughs> <laughs> And then the uh, final one from Jason here reads, Travis, my name is Travis, not Carrie. Hey, where's everybody <laughs> going? <laughs> uh, Elijah wrote, yeah, it's spelled C-U-B-S. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good, man. <laughs> Sean wrote, my team can't even score when it's filled with all-stars. How much do I have to pay for some run support in the second <laughs> half? <laughs> oh, man. Um, Nick, who already had a couple of captions, chimes in with another here, and it reads, yep, shave my face, my head, my pubes, everything. Makes it look bigger. I mean, look at it. No, seriously. Here, let me stand up so you can get your face right up next to it. You won't be able to say my chin is not from more pronounced. <laughs> these are great so far you guys Um, James wrote beard or no beard mullet or no mullet I still wouldn't know who you were without your name plastered up behind you (laughs) 90% of cube fans (laughs) (laughs) oh Oh, so good I love the cubes fans yeah and Corey um, wrote, shares the same name as you, wrote and spelled the same as well. Yeah, it is. Theo said I was going to New York. I assumed he meant the Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a few more here. James wrote, um, Travis had a brilliant first half, so let's start with that. I mean, he was throwing that snapdragon breaking ball in the kitchen at the end of his window, and the hitters can't get the mechanics of their trigger timing mechanism out in front of their hands and inside out the ball off the label and muscle it, which takes away that back leg buggy whip swing. Brilliant! <laughs> attributed to, to Keith Moreland. Oh, man. <laughs> you know what another, and I always forget to bring this up, you know what another Morelandism is that drives me nuts? What's that? He put a charge in it. Yeah. He says uh, that all the time. Yeah, and I noticed one today that was getting on my nerves, too. He said it, it um, gets out of here in a hurry. <laughs> he does ball, say that a lot. This ballpark, it really gets out of here in a hurry. He put uh, a charge in it, and it got out in a hurry. James, I'm sorry I didn't do your uh, caption justice. I didn't have my uh, A-game Moreland impression going on today. Um. Did you say we do have some Google Plus uh, captions, yeah. Corey? Okay, yeah. I'll keep going on these. Then. Um, let's see. Michael also wrote, he has a couple more here. Here's the church, here's the steeple, open up, and here's the people. People who won't see me play at the All-Star <laughs> game. Uh, my wife Beth just uh, opened the door and said that one was good. She must have overheard it. <laughs> um, um, Michael also wrote, I'm heading to New York, so I figured I'd get myself cleaned up so I could go cruising for some ladies and then let you jerks make my wood look small. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, I like that because, the, the, yeah, that's pretty funny. Why is the wood smaller on his name? Yeah, why is the Travis larger? <laughs> The surname seems to be the important thing when it comes to sports. Yeah, that that's a good catch there. Michael. Unless you're like a Homer commentator, like uh, Keith Moreland always calls them by their first name and Hawk, right. for example. Right. Like, uh, yeah, um, Pauly did a great job there on the right. pick at first. <laughs> right, right. Um, so anyway, um, continuing on, we have a spate of... Actually, you know, let's divide these DeRose captions in half. Okay. So I'll read the first few of these DeRose captions, and then you can take this. Holy hell. (laughs) Man. He posted a lot. 
All right. Um, the first one, the French delegation delegation wishes to surrender. <laughs> this is look behind him. I guess it kind of looks like the, the, French the flag. flag yeah. yeah. Uh, the next one reads, Wood. Hey, Hannity, how is my makeup? Did I put on too much blush? I want cheek structure like yours. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we have our first watch comment here. Oh, there it is. Here you go. My, my G-Shock watch prevents Ian Stewart wrist injuries. <laughs> <laughs> I can take over here since you've read so many. All right, cool. Thanks. Uh, so, yeah, the rest of these are all DeRose. Uh, Wood, I like Gatorade, just like my friend Tebow. It gives me magic Jesus powers with athletics. <laughs> uh, Wood, you should really give that DeRose guy that DVD pack. Who doesn't love watching Joe Morgan eat <laughs> shit on a pop? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay. Wood, yes, yes, I've shaved my beard. I had to keep it because of PETA. You see, the Chicago dodo bird was found to live in my beard, and I had to wait until it left its nest. The bird only comes... Or, I'm sorry. The birds only just left when Ian Stewart was released. It seems that they had stayed so long because they only eat Arby's horsey sauce. That tasty GMO zing goes well with everything. It's definitely not a natural sauce, is it? No, no. Uh, wood. And I grabbed Paul Sullivan by the neck like this. He had bit... Okay, I'm going to start over. Uh, Wood. Man, my, my screen is all screwed up. It's like blurry. Um, and I grabbed Paul Sullivan by the neck like this. He had a, a bit of wee on himself. <laughs> uh, Wood. I would like to thank Fox News for taking the time to talk to me. I want to talk... <laughs> I want to talk about bullies. I went to this bar called Duffy's. I walked in and found myself surrounded by <laughs> Cubs merch. My surprise turned to horror when the bar folks thought I was a terrorist and shaved it all off. <laughs> I was asked. <laughs> and all I asked was, look at all that snack bar. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I don't know if I'm reading these right because it is like, I don't know what I did. But... Here, let me, I can take the last five here. Uh, the next one reads, Wood. You have very soft hands, Mr. O'Reilly. Which product do you use? <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's another one. Wood. These buttons on my sleeve are safeties for my cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Just have the weird short sleeve shirt with like a button, like a little flap with a button on it. I just bought a shirt like that. Yeah, I have one like that too, I think. But you're like, what's the point of that? Like, are you going to keep your switchblade in there? Or? Actually, my... It buttons, but you can unbutton it. It turns into a long sleeve. Oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> it looks like that has no chance of becoming no. a long sleeve. No. <laughs> um, here's another one. The Travis Wood bobblehead dolls look so lifelike. <laughs> he does kind of look like a wax figure there. Yeah, he does. He does. Probably the lighting. Okay, we finally made it to the end of the Facebook comments. There's two more, and then we'll switch over to the Google Plus ones. Here's uh, another one. Amanda Bynes really pulls a Britney and cuts off all her hair. She said she is starting starring in the new movie called She's the Man, Baseball Boogaloo. Greta Van Susteren is rumored <laughs> to play Bud Selig. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> and then finally, DeRose, his last caption reads... Would yeah, Jeff Samarja held me down and shaved my head and face. He then proceeded to super glue the clippings of to his face and mullet. <laughs> yeah, Samarja kind of has a super glued mullet or a <laughs> facial hair thing going. That's all right, good. that's all the Facebook ones. Holy cow! Okay, so we got three <laughs> over on Google Plus. Right. Um, first one's from Jason. My agent told me I have to be clean shaven if I want to play in New York. Uh, and then Adam has two here. So I was just saying to Castro, you probably shouldn't pick at that when kablooey, cubs stank all over the floor. I sure <laughs> hope Ricketts is putting a lot of extra money into the clubhouse renovations. It's going to take a hazmat team to clean up that mess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and his last one here, the very last one of them all. Uh, so to make a long story short, 
Swaim really, really doesn't like to be tickled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So it's just I, the two of us. we got to come up with one here. I, I kind of have one in mind. i got to take a second to kind of review a little bit. I mean, it's, this is kind of tough because yeah, there's so there's many so of them. Many. Um, but I'm going through and cutting and pasting, <laughs> copying and pasting over to my Word document the ones I really liked. Um, and I'm almost done here. But, man, yeah, some great entries. Uh, I, I laughed a lot. Thank you, everybody who participated. Um, this is probably the most entries we've had. Yeah. If we had this many every week, I think we'd have to narrow it down to, like, a top ten or something. Yeah, top prob five. probably. Um, where's the one about the chin? Because <laughs> that one's pretty great. That, that's, that's my number one. <laughs> that's Nick from Virginia. The, yep, shave my face, my head, my pubes, everything. <laughs> Makes it look a lot bigger. I mean, look at it. No, seriously. <laughs> yeah, that one's pretty great. Um, I just wanted to mention a couple other ones I thought were really awesome here. Um, yeah, all right, I think I, I think I have my uh, top list. But is that your number one? I think it is. Okay. That one made me laugh harder than than any other one, I think. Yeah, I I think so too. Um, my honorable mentions go um, go to uh, I only wear that disguise when I'm wearing a Cubs uniform. <laughs> yeah. Um, just from, from Matthew. Good job, Matthew. Um, the, yeah, the team wanted to send Marmel here as a joke, but they traded him before the game and decided they send the guy he'd screwed over most the most this season. There, um, yeah. That was Terry. That was a great one, too. Yeah, it's spelled C-U-B-S. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's Elijah. Good job, Elijah. Um, here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open up, and here's the people. People who won't see me play in the All-Star game from Michael. Very good. And then uh, I liked um, DeRosa's um, Who Doesn't Love Watching Joe Morgan Eat Shit on a Fly. <laughs> I also liked Pointing out Samarja's facial hair, I, that was, <laughs> I like that one too. But yeah. so, do we agree that uh, Nick. Nick Nick is the winner? Nick is the winner. All right, Nick. So email me your address, and then I'll know what state you actually live in right now. <laughs> I think you're in Wisconsin now, but anyways, email that to me, and I will get you a copy of the MLB Bloopers doubleheader DVD. Man, good man. There's a lot of pressure on me to come up with a good photo for next week, since so many people apparently want this DVD. Yeah. And DeRosa is going to have to step it up, you know. If he wants it that bad, he's going to have to. You, you know, I I he think had a couple uh, contenders there, but he did. He, but you know what? He waited till the last minute. You can't do that. <laughs> I mean, unless he's really thinking about it the whole week. But I don't think you can come in at the end and just swoop in and grab it. <laughs> Or you can. I don't know. Or you can, yeah. <laughs> you might just come up with something on the spur of the moment. That's pretty good. Right, right. Well, that does it for this week's episode. Uh, we apologize that it went so long. We normally try to keep them under an hour, but definitely did not do that this week. So sorry about that. Um, but we had a lot to talk about with the Junior Lake stuff and all that. And uh, It's a good topic. Good. Uh, it was kind of nice that they gave us something like that to talk about. Yeah, right. <laughs> was like, that was a blessing. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the Cubs go to Phoenix for a four-game series, and then we'll head up to San Francisco for the weekend. And the Cubs have already won as many games against the NL West as they did last year. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, so we will have some late-night games from now until Sunday's day games. So um, I guess depending on your work schedule, that's either a good thing or a bad thing. But... I kind of like that, you know, then I can watch games after my kids go to bed. So I kind of like the West Coast games in me the summer. Too. Yeah, me too. So we will be back next, next Sunday evening to discuss these two series. And until then, go Cubs.
All right, you there? Yep. Did you hear an episode title in there? Um, shoot, there's got to be one in the captions, right? I know, unless we wanted it to be like kind of a Junior Lake focused thing. I don't know. Yeah. Um, dang, I got to piss so bad, dude. I know, I do too. I'm gonna have to leave. <laughs> I'm gonna have to leave the mic here because, like, it seriously is about to come out. <laughs> Oh, man. So sorry, man. That's okay. I don't know. I don't. Can't think of anything that. <laughs> Mahalam is Jesus. <laughs> um, I'm gonna end the. Uh, I'm gonna end the broadcast. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I think uh, JD was still in there, but. Have a good night. Yeah, thanks for listening. See you later.